Good morning, everybody. And today, what I wanted to do was to share a book review of Build a Business from Your Kitchen Table. And this was written by the two founders of NotInTheHighStreet.com, Sophie Cornish and Holly Tucker. Now, the reason that I wanted to share this book review with you today is that I'm going to have the fantastic opportunity to interview Sophie Cornish for International Women's Day at IOD Northern Ireland on the 8th of March next week. So in preparation, um, Sophie very kindly sent me a copy of her book and I thought that I would share my thoughts and reflections on the book for you. Now, in essence, this is a book for people who want to start their own business. As the name suggests, the verb is to build. Uh, so therefore, it is designed for people who do want to get up and running. Now, this book has a difference though. Well, one big, one big difference and one for what I felt was a smaller difference. If you want to build a business to make it scalable and really big from the beginning, that is what this book does, is it has a mindset here of how can you build a business to make not incremental steps towards growth, but to think big from the beginning. And that's what I found different about this, is that it very much is um, designed by women who would subsequently go on to turn over hundreds of millions of euro. And they started with that intention in mind and they have built it with that intention of mind. So many of you might have heard of the business, not in the high street.com. It's an online marketplace for items uh, that are boutique and bijou and different and bespoke and made by people who want to handcraft them with love. It's not eBay. It is instead something that is far more personalized and um, far more in line with that trend. But they wanted to reach from the stars to the beginning. So if you're one of those people where you'd like to build a business uh, and think big from the very, very beginning, think scale, this, this book is for you. If, it is, uh, if, if you're more incremental and you, you, know, you want to see how it goes and then you want to build it step by step, it's good for you too. There's no doubt about that. But it's just, I did find that that mentality was there from the beginning. Now, the other thing I found um, is that I didn't build a business to do with craft uh, and I didn't build a business that was to do with product, whereas this is. They created a service for people who would thus go on to create a, a craft business uh, and specifically a product based business. Now, mine, my businesses are all service based. Savvy Teens, uh, our summer camp and TY work placement business is a service. Financial training is a service. The Positive Economist, the speaking business is a service. So that would have been the second difference that I found to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent, because you can still apply it and use it. Um, but I, I did find that of a lesser extent. Now, the second thing I wanted to mention about this is within the book, um, a range of times, what they did was they turned to the people who are uh, exhibiting on the site. Uh, and here, for example, I hope you can see that now, they said a number of times, we asked our partners. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times they say that. We've asked our partners. And they bring in not just their own scalable here's what happened mentality, but also what they did was that they brought in, here's the experience of the people that we have worked with and that we have helped. And I think that that's really helpful. So what this book actually feels like is their real world experience, um, as well as a very curated community focused experience as well. Uh, so that was another thing that I really, that I really, really liked about it. And, and you'll see that, see that from it. Now, um, here's something I disagreed with. And I, I will be mentioning this to, to Sophie when I see her, is in one chapter that's really, really useful in here, really useful, is all about funding, right? So how you find funding, the different types of funding, how you pitch for funding, um, how you distinguish what you particularly might need or what might be useful in funding, etc. In fact, that particular chapter is called Money, 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 Facing the Fear, and earning it anyway, okay? And, and in here, they have, they have a range of excellent things. One thing that they mentioned uh, is that they said grant funding, sometimes that the process and the criteria can be so stringent, they described it as looking for a, a, a small, like a 50 pence coin down the back of an oversized couch. Now, my experience was different. Um, my experience with engaging with the agencies in Ireland and indeed with Europe um, has been Yes, the process can be stringent or the criteria can be stringent. Yes, the process can be long. Okay, I, I, I'd agree with that. However, 
if you look at that process as free consultancy uh, for a start, it can be a very, very useful activity. But secondly, that there can be really good um, outcomes to come from it in terms of financial supports. So we have achieved those in, let's say, in our innovation partnership or in a feasibility study that we conducted in 2011 into webinars um, or the non-financial supports like Enterprise Europe Network and the mentoring and the, the networking, etc. So that was that was one area where uh, where my experience was different. So it's sorry, I shouldn't have said that I disagree with them. And um, my experience and and that of those that I have recommended this to would be the way in which I would say so. Now, another thing that I found really useful in this book, and you know what, it's something that I'll hold on to for a very long time, is that they call the down and dirty test. And the down and dirty test has a selection of questions. One of the best things you can ever give to an entrepreneur is a list of questions to ask themselves. Hence, back to my, my consultancy point. But the down and dirty test consists of four tests, originality, um, the competitive test, the financial test, and the expansion test. That's a really good one to have. So if you're somebody who's thinking of setting up a business or you're advising somebody who themselves want to maybe follow your lead if you've set up a business and you want to say, well, you know, you really need to think about it and you know, you need, your gut needs to be right, your passion needs to be right. Sometimes what they need is literally a list of questions where they can hold. And those questions, by the way, uh, the roundabout here in the beginning of the book and uh, what they are, uh, I, yeah, here we go, right? So here's the originality test. And there's only about six or seven questions, but they're, they're good. Like, um, here are the competitive tests and so on. Page 41 uh, to 40, 40, 46. Uh, so in, in those pages, I would say I found that they, I found them very, very good and very useful and very thorough. But you know what they do? They hold up a business, sorry, they hold up a mirror to your business idea and it will reflect back a very clear, unobjective, um, thinking from your head, not from your heart type of reality. So that, that I found excellent in the book as well. Now, the final thing that I'm going to say about it is uh, there are lots of business books that you can read that come from a range of perspectives. What I will say about Sophie and Holly is they've poured their heart into this book just like they did with their business. It's very personal. It's very personal about times that they felt overjoyed, times that they were in tears, times that they came out of their boardroom in tears and everybody else saw them, times that they, they talk about times when they were um, absolutely exhausted and felt guilty, felt elated. They talk a lot about what it was like to combine work with life, work with being working mothers. Um, uh, Holly has, a, has one child and Sophie has four children and they were at different stages different ages and how they have felt along the way you, you will feel i feel that i know the two women behind this book now and um, i've had a chance to speak to sophie as i mentioned in preparation for the interview next week i will be interviewing her then in person uh, with the 450 people who will be attending the conference but i definitely felt uh, if i had never had the chance to speak to sophie before is that i is that i know them now and the other thing is it's so practical it is about check out this website think through this process here's what a blog is they have also lots and lots and lots and lots of places they've highlighted terms so that they take the jargon out of the book well they don't put the, take the jargon out of the book they take the jargon out of the language and then at the back here all of those words highlighted in blue all have different definitions but no doubt about it if you are somebody that wants to take up a book with a view to using it as a practical guide in order to progress forward and to create a business, this book can be really, really useful. Now, I also, of course, you know, I have to say, I wrote a book like that and it's called The Savvy Guide to Making More Money. So I had my own frame of reference as an author uh, writing a book to compare to reading a book from, from the two, the two women here clearly had a similar idea in mind. And I had that, you know, special place in my heart about where I was comparing my experience to them. And I just want to say, Sophie and Holly, you've done a fantastic job. Excellent book. It's great for people who really want that practical, you know, drive forward and go for it. Now, what I will say as well, I always, in my book reviews, I point out a group of people who wouldn't necessarily find a book useful. Um, and, and those people are people who simply don't want to build a business. If you want to read about a business in a very theoretical sense and you want to consider theories and you know, various different things like that. This book is far too practical for that. So this, this book is not for people who want to theorize 
Um, I know I have to make up words and book reviews, but anyway, that's one of them. Um, or people who want to dream. These women will take away the shroud of uncertainty about how to go forward. There's no doubt about that. But what I will say is that this book, who I won't say, if, if, if you simply want to sit back and to read about an entrepreneur's story and in your own way, you want to find a way in which, you know, you kind of want to make up an excuse for how this wouldn't be you. This isn't it either. Holly and Sophie pave the way forward and they give you plenty of opt-outs. They give you plenty of ways of which they say, you know what, this building a business isn't for me because it is too hard or it's too complicated or it takes too much time or it takes too much belief or it can be too scary or it can be too elating or it can be too whatever. They give lots of opt-outs. So if you're looking for, you know, for an opt-out before you start, they're going to make it too easy for you because they will point out the ways in which this is not suitable. So the point I'm making here is that if you really want to go after building a business scalably, thinking big from the beginning, this book is ideal. So Holly, Sophie, you've done a super job. Sophie, looking forward to meeting you next week. And to everybody else, best of luck in, uh, in what would be a great read and a very practical one. Thank you, everybody. And happy February, soon to be happy March. And for all of you women out there, I'm hopefully I'm among the first to say happy International Women's Day. Thank you and goodbye.